In this video, we'll learn how to turn any image into a super cool hologram. Let's get started. If you'd like to follow along with me, you can download these images in the video description. So here's our plan. This is our background image. I want to make this watch face light up, and then I want to make a hologram come from the watch. Now for the hologram, I want to use an image with someone running. This will just add a sense of action and urgency to the scene that we're creating. To make this look like a hologram, I'm going to add some horizontal lines to create sort of a fringe pattern. Then I'm also going to make this image semi-transparent. That way we'll be able to see some of the background behind our hologram. And to make the hologram look like it's glowing, we definitely need to darken the background. All right, so there's our plan. I'll go ahead and rename this pixel layer. And then we'll get started by adjusting the background. I'll go ahead and turn this off. So we're going to add quite a few adjustments to this background, but let's start with the biggest change, making the background a lot darker. I'm going to add a levels adjustment. Then I'm going to drag this down and to the right of the background layer to make it a child layer. To darken up this background, I'm going to go to the output white level and I'm just going to drag down this slider. I'll bring it to around 50%. Next, I want to add some color to the shadows and highlights separately. To make this whole scene look more cinematic, I want to add blue tones to the shadows and nice warm orange tones to the highlights. Let's do that using a gradient map adjustment. I'll select this middle node and then I'll press delete. So for the shadows node here, I'll select the color and I'll make this a nice blue green. I think that color looks pretty good. Then let's go to the highlights node and I'm just going to make this a nice light orange color. To make this blend into the background better, I'm going to change the blend mode up here, and I'm going to change this to multiply. Now, right now, I don't really like what it's doing to the highlights. They look too dark. If you ever want to take away an effect from either the shadows or the highlights, a great way to do this is to use blend ranges. I'll click here to open blend ranges. If you've never used blend ranges before, I made a full video explaining how to use them, and I'll link that video in the video description if you want to learn more about that. Because I don't want this effect being applied to the highlights, I'll take the highlights node, and I'm just going to drag this downward. I'm also going to drag it over to the left slightly. I think that looks much better for the highlights. We still have a nice dark scene, but we can still see some bright highlights poking through. To make the highlights more orange, I'm going to add another adjustment layer. This time, I'm going to add a recolor adjustment. I'm going to make this a nice orange color. I'll bring down the saturation, and then I'll also brighten this up so that this coloring only affects the highlights, I'll go back to our blend ranges. Then this time, I'll drag down the shadows node so that this doesn't affect our shadows. And I'll bring this over to the right side. Now you can see what this has done. Here's the before and after. Okay, and as one last edit to this background, Let's add some more blue-green coloring to the image with a curves adjustment. I'll go to my adjustments and add a curve. 
Then I'm going to go to the red channel and I'm just going to drag it downward on the shadow side of the spline. This takes away red, which is basically adding in cyan. Then I'm going to go to the green channel and I'm just going to drag the green up slightly in the shadows. Then I'll go to the master, which affects the lighting, and I'm just going to drag this downward to darken the image even more. Now, right now this looks very green, and I'm not sure I like that effect, so I'm going to lower the opacity to around 50%. We still have some nice blue-green coloring, but it's not quite so intense. Okay, our background definitely looks nice and dark, which will really help the hologram to pop. So for the next step, let's bring our hologram into the image. So this is the image that I chose for the hologram. I like this for a few reasons. I like that the subject is running. I think it's always a good idea to add action to an image just to make it more interesting. I also like that he's wearing a suit. This makes him look a little bit more fancy and like a spy or something. So let's go ahead and copy this by pressing Command or Control C. Then I'll press Command or Control V to paste the image in. I'm going to click and drag this outside of the background layer. And now, using the Move tool, I'm just going to shrink this down so that all of the sides of the image are inside of the document. Now we can make a selection of our subject using the Selection Brush tool. I'm just going to adjust the size of my brush using the bracket keys. And now I can click and drag to make a selection of the subject. If you've selected too much like I did, go ahead and hold down Alt or Option on your keyboard, and then click and drag to remove from your selection. This selection looks pretty good. I'll press the mask icon, and that has removed the background. Then I'll press Command or Control D to deselect. With our subject all cut out, I'm going to grab the Move tool, and I'll select the Subject layer, and now we can move the subject in place. So I'm going to make the subject a bit larger, and I'll position him right above the watch. I think that looks pretty good. Now it's time to make this look more like a hologram. The first step to make this look like a hologram is to add horizontal lines to the subject. Now, there are a few ways to do this, but the easiest one is to use one of the filters, and this filter is called Halftone. I'm going to change this setting right here, the screen setting, and I'm going to change it to be a line. Now you can see horizontal lines going across the subject. However, these lines are pretty large, and it's hard to even see the subject's face. To fix this, I'm going to go where it says Cell Size, and then I'm just going to drag this downward until it's around 15. I think this gives plenty of detail to see the subject, but it still has that fringed hologram look. Now our next step is to make copies of the subject layer and stretch them out so that they kind of add a glitchy hologram look. So first, I'm going to duplicate this layer by pressing Command or Control J. With this duplicate layer, I'm going to add a blur filter to stretch this out. So I'll go to the filters, and then I'm going to add a motion blur filter. I'm going to bring the radius up. You can see what this is doing, it's stretching out the subject. However, I want our subject to be stretched out even more, so I'm going to click in the box and I'm just going to type in 800. 
So now you can see the subject is really stretched out. I'm going to select this layer and I'm just going to bring down the opacity to around 60%. Then I'm going to duplicate this layer by pressing Command or Control J. And I'll double click on the Motion Blur filter and I'm going to bring this to 300. So now we have three layers of this effect. We have our main layer, then it's stretched out a little bit more and stretched out even more. This is really coming along. Let's go ahead and group all of these subject layers. I'll select the first one, then I'll hold down Shift to select the bottom one. Then I'll press Command or Control G to group these layers together. I'm going to rename this group Subject. With these grouped together, now we can affect all of these layers at once. The first thing I want to do is add a mask to this group. Then I'll select the mask, and I'm going to paint away some of this effect. Right now, it just looks a bit too boxy for me. I'd like it to blend in a little more naturally to the background. To fix this, I'll grab the paintbrush tool. Then I'm going to decrease the hardness of my paintbrush and lower the flow. Then I'm going to paint in black to remove some of these lines. I'll press D to get my default colors. And now I'll increase the size of my brush and paint in black to remove some of these harsh boxy edges. All right, I think that looks a bit better. I'm also going to select the whole group and then I'm going to lower the opacity of this group so that the hologram becomes semi-transparent. Let's finish off this hologram group by changing up the lighting and colors. First, I'm going to add a levels adjustment. And I'll make this a child layer to the group. To do that, I'll close up the group and then drag it down and to the right of the group. Now to fix up this lighting, I'm going to go to the output black level and I'm just going to bring this over a bit. This will just gray out some of the blacks to make them look a little less contrasted. Next, I'm going to add a recolor adjustment. I want this to have a blue-greenish color, so I'm going to change the color to blue-green. Then I'll decrease the saturation quite a bit, and I'll go ahead and darken this color. Okay, I think that's looking pretty good. At this point, we just have a few more details to add before we finish. First, let's start with the watch face. I want this watch face to look like it's glowing and that the hologram is coming from it. To do this, I'm going to come to our shapes and I'm going to add an ellipse tool shape. I'll click and drag to create the ellipse. And now I'm just going to make it the same size and shape as the watch face. I'll lower the opacity of this and bring in the edges so that they exactly overlap with the watch face. I'll go ahead and bring up that opacity again. And then I'll change the blend mode. I think overlay looks nice. You can see we have a subtle glow and I think that looks really nice. Next, we're gonna paint some light onto the background. If this really is glowing, I think we should have some light reflecting on the man's sleeve and on the man's chest. So to do this, I'm going to add a new pixel layer. I'm going to bring this beneath the subject layer, but above the background layer. Using this layer, I'll go ahead and grab the paintbrush tool and I'm going to paint with a nice low flow in white to add some light to the background. 
So I'll add some light to the man's arm and on the man's chest. To help this blend in softly to our background, I'm going to change the blend mode to soft light. Here's the before and after. Now, right now, this looks a bit too obvious, so I'm going to lower the opacity just a little bit. And I think that looks really nice. So after all those adjustments, we are done. This is our finished hologram effect. If you want to learn more affinity tricks like this, you can check out our free course in the video description. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next Affinity Revolution tutorial.